Good evening, everybody. Good night. Or, no, good evening, I think, is what you say when you say hello. Talking Dirty with Maestro. Maestro. Not just numbers. Not just stats. It's, it's about, about what, what they mean. mean. going to send you the information. Talking Dirty. Hello and welcome to Talking Dirty with you. Me. How's everybody feeling? Hope we all is good. A lot of great games this week, as always. I should just stop saying that because it's automatic, right? I'm talking about a pattern in games that are being called upsets, though I might not necessarily agree with that. I'm going to go with it for the sake of this argument. There is one pattern in all the games that I've seen that are fitting into this mold, and it seems to be this. We will allow your player, whomever that might be that night, have their game. Let them go on and get theirs while we get ours collectively as a team. And sometimes the better teams, when they get trapped into that, it happens, right? And then they can't pull out of it once they realize they've already been caught in the death spiral. Losses by the originators. The few losses by Cascadia. They are your breakers. A couple other teams in that same mold of being strong, prominent, talent-laden teams. It seems most of their losses have come in the guise of, we'll let one of your guys get theirs while we do ours. And what does that tell you? It tells you strong teams more often than not equals strong systems. Now, I I know where you're going to go with this. Just give me one second. Certain teams that are expected to win have shown a propensity for playing within their system and not getting out of their game. Those teams, when they lose, tend to be brought into a pattern of something has happened that's not in the norm. For whatever reason, it's been masked enough that it's not picked up upon until way too late. In that particular point, the game is almost over. And the team has to do too much to get back into the game. Not all games are lost. Yes, some games are actually won. Credit should be given where credit is due. And oftentimes we see this pattern in the games where if I understand what your system is, for instance, a game where the originators lost, Cooper Flagg was allowed to score 30 something points. Meanwhile, no one else scored at all. The game last night where Bay Area Breakers lost to Randing Trey's, Trey Hyman got his game in. Unfortunately, though, very little bit on his side. Meanwhile, on the other side, reigning trades were able to play a complete game as a team, and the score, though close, was still a victory for the trades. If your system is strong, if your system is solid, things like that are not going to break you down, and you're going to be able to maintain through, and with the talent in this league, it's not difficult at all. Let your boy know what you think. Am I close? Am I right? What, what's going on with you? And, you know, I want you to get some mule do the same. Thank you for for listening to to the Maestro. Maestro. Want to get involved? Bring Bring it. it. Drop in discord.gg slash simworldhoops. If you you have the brain, brain. join as a coach. If If you you have the game, game, join as a player. Seize the game, game. be the game. game. Now, back Back to to the Maestro. Maestro. Sorry. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back. (laughs) And welcome back to Talking Dirty with your boy. So, building on what we talked about in the first half, right? But that superstar player that's getting their game on. And there has been those games where you see two superstars get their game on throughout the course of basketball history. I want to talk about a few, but I want to talk about a few in this context. 
when you see two players get their game on in a certain way, and I'm, we said this in the first half, some games are actually won. Not all games are lost. And what we see there in a certain strategy, like we talked about in the first half, you can win the stat sheet. We'll just win the game. If we let the individual play and they have a great game, it's about when they scored, how much they scored. But when the team wins in a system, you just don't feel it. It sort of creeps up on you. Next thing you know, oh, my God, we're down by this much. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. We're about to lose this game because the other teams stay within their system. Tony Dungy, football coach, once gave a great reference to uh, two games he had when he was the man, when he was the manager, when he was the coach of the Colts when they played New England back the year that they lost to one of the years they lost to New England in the AFC championship game. And he talked about how that loss in the AFC championship game happened in a game they had earlier in the season in the first half. They had just taken a last minute lead over New England and he decided they were going to, instead of doing a squib kick in the last few seconds, they would do a full kickoff. New England ran it back for a touchdown. And that moment led to them losing the game by three. That meant they also lost home field advantage and ended up having to go play in New England. And that's why they lost the AFC Championship game. Now, the detail with which he remembered that is hyper specific. And it goes back to some of the things that we talk about. You can look at a turning point within the game and you know when it happens because it's something that happens out of the ordinary. And when we see a player have a game the way they have, there's always you can go back to three or four possessions where if one of them had a one went different. Yes, his team or her team might have won the game. And this is not about should, could have, would have. This is about that is a moment where the usual thing that would have happened is that player would have scored. Not on every play, but you can look at those ones where it was quite obvious. When you look at matches, matches throughout history. Dominique Wilkins scoring 47, Bird scoring 34 in the same game. Bird comes away with the win. McGrady versus Dirk Nowitzki. McGrady scores 48. Dirk scores 53. McGrady comes up with the win. You can please look up these games. I don't want to get into the details here, but there's something coming here. Arena scoring 60. Kobe scoring 45. Iverson scoring 51. Vince Carter scoring 34. Iverson scoring 33, Vince Carter scoring 43, because they had two games where they went back and forth like that. Not all games are lost. Some games are just simply won because that superstar or that other player just did one more thing. And that's what separates the greats from the very goods. You find a way to do that one more thing. If I'm scoring 53, maybe I need to score 55. If I'm scoring 60, maybe I need to score 61. You find a way to do it, and that's when your name gets written down in the history books versus your name is just mentioned because you had a great game one night. Every possession counts. Every movement of the ball counts. And if you don't believe me, go back and scout yourself on games when you missed a bunny in the paint and realize if I'd have made that one, if I'd have made that one, and even though I would have still missed the other seven, guess what? We lost by three. We would have won by one if all things stayed the same. You know what's up. Yell at your boy. Tell me what you think. How those numbers working out. I always say what you got to say. You know Maestro wants to hear it. We love it. Please be good. Please stay safe. And no matter what you do, when you call an Uber and John Wick shows up, don't get in it. Like I need to talk to somebody. Thank you for listening to Maestro. Thank you again for checking out Maestro. Drop a tag below and give us a piece of your mind. See you next time. Well, thank you for your time. Have a wonderful day.